here who have, a, you're a, you know, you came as a couple and you took two packets. If you can give one back, we actually have run out. So um, if there's anyone who can donate back, we will put all this material, the presentation, and the links to the actual packets um, on our Morgan Community Association website later. But we tried to give you as much as you could walk away with and kind of, you know, get all the clip notes. So we're sorry that it's so, yeah, there's, there's chairs that we're lining up. We'll just do the best we can. And like Deb said, I'm really not interested in getting shot. I'm, I'm, we're, I'm gonna do the best I can. I've been involved with HALA for about two and a half years, part of the original um, setting of it. Brennan is really here to be my technical expert because if you ask me a very hard question, I may have to go, I don't remember that. But he's someone you can chat with later. We are trying not to get into the weeds and the details, but to at least inform you about what's going on. So as we call it, it's the Cliff Notes version. And I may say, that question's too detailed. I'll talk with you after the formal presentation. We tried to leave, like Deb said, we've got a little time after this to actually have the dialogue around the maps to say, what is this we're looking at? So that's the key thing. What's the overview? How to read them? We have some community association uh, observations that we want to give to you. And then the big thing is, go back and look at the maps on the table. So, so Part of, so I'm gonna go ahead and go. The folks of you out there, if, you, if I don't know if we're out of chairs, but you can grab some and sit there because I realize you can see me. Um, Say again? I could get more chairs out if people want to sit, if you want to stand. Yeah, why don't you give us about five or six more chairs for that room? And what Deb did say is when you actually have real questions, we do have microphones so that people can actually hear your questions. And I will stop at a couple of different places through this presentation just to make sure everybody's keeping up with me. Because it will be a speed day. I'm just going, like, what is that projector doing? So anyway, you'll be entertained by the strobe light. So the mayor created two years ago a stakeholders group called Housing Affordability and Livability Agenda, the HALA Agenda. And that stakeholder group met for a long time, multiple months. And they're, they're particularly addressed to look at housing in Seattle and how we, what we're going to do with the increasing rates that we've got and how we're going to ma manage to make Seattle to be an affordable place to stay. So I'll use the word HALA and I'll use the acronym MHA. Go ahead to the next slide. The HALA goal was 30,000 new market rate homes and 20,000 of those being at affordable rates. And we'll talk a little bit later on about what affordable means. And, and basically, when I say affordable housing, it's really rent-restricted, subsidized type housing. So when you hear me say affordable housing, that they want to create 20,000 affordable units, that's subsidized housing. And the MHA program has a specific goal of 6,000 of those. So that is the one element of HALA that we're talking about is this affordable stuff. Go ahead. You know, so you're gonna kind of miss, I don't know why it's also not showing the whole thing. Over there, we've got little bubbles that will help you refer to the things that we gave you in your packet. So that first one, it's a very nice summary. That, and thank you to the city for helping support this. Even though this is all pulled together by community members, they did give us all these handouts and the formal presentation material. So this is something you can take home and read. It will give you a more detailed description, a, a clearer description than I can probably give of what MHA is. So this is the, the first bubble up there. But I continue to call it grand bargain. <coughs> Go ahead. Because what the grand bargain is, as HALA was winding down its stakeholder work, the mayor um, came together with some developers, both nonprofits and for-profit, and he struck what was called the grand bargain. So a copy of the grand bargain is on the wall back there. And it's three pages that basically say, we are going to give people who develop in the city, whether it's nonprofits or developers, we're going to give them some additional capacity, which means additional height, an additional area that they can build on a lot, in return for a requirement that they include affordable housing in their project, or they pay into a pool for that affordable housing. So I'm going to make sure that's super clear to everybody. Every time, if this legislation goes through, every time somebody builds on one of the lots that's been affected by MHA, a zoning change created by MHA, 
That developer will have to pay a percentage into a pot of money, or he will have to provide a percentage of units on his piece of land. And right now the numbers are around, um, I'm going to use Morgan a lot as an example because we're sort of like a middle of the road urban village. Our percentage is 7%. So if somebody built a 100 unit apartment after these zoning changes go into place, a 100 unit apartment, that developer would have to put in seven <coughs> affordable housing units. The rest of them he can rent at market rate, but those seven are going to be retained and tracked by the office of housing for 75 years and the rents have to stay at an affordable level and we'll define affordable a little bit later. So that is really the key thing. If you own a piece of property and you don't develop it, you don't pay anything into the pot. It's only if you actually develop it. So that's, and it's mandatory. There is, there's a couple of small provisions of ways to wiggle out of it, but it's mandatory everywhere. And so where it will go is everywhere that there is low rise, commercial, neighborhood commercial, multifamily zoning, and inside urban villages, it will also go where there are single family zoning. They will, they're recommending to change the single family zoning inside urban villages to be different things to capture that ability to go more dense and build a different kinds of style to get affordable housing. So I'm just making sure you know where it is. We'll see a map in a little bit here too. So that, that ability to, when you upzone, that is what's giving us the capacity to offset. The city believes that it will increase housing choices throughout the city. And this is also a program that's used in the state by other cities. So Seattle is one of the, the later ones to come to this. Okay? So, I'm not, there's only two, two slides in here that should scare you. This is one of them, right? And it's only because it's just like math. And I don't do math standing up very well. So, this is one of the handouts. And what this one is, is area median income and affordable housing definitions. And, and so this will help you understand who this is going to help, right? In, this, in an area like Seattle, they do calculations to get to something called Area Median Income, AMI. And when they arrive at that number, what the number represents is that half the people in that area make more than that number, and half the people in that area make less than that number. So the number for Seattle is set, okay? And then affordable housing is 60% of that number. And so that little tr table will tell you that if you are a person who makes, um, you're a single person, and you, your income level is 60% of the area median, you're making $37,000. So what this does is it translates it more into monthly rents, because that's kind of what we, did I say 37,000, I hope? Yeah. My mouth and my brain sometimes don't see the same thing. So what this does is it translates it for us. So down here at the bottom is some examples of people who make that $37,650. It's elementary school teacher salaries, it's two people who might be ma earning minimum income, um, an administrative assistant. That's the range of salaries that we're talking about. That person, normal standards are you pay 30% of your income to your housing needs, right? So if you're paying 30% of your 60% of AMI, that's about $1,000 a month. That's what you can afford comfortably. And so that is what we call 60% of AMI. The problem is there's this kind of huge gap going on in Seattle. So the average rent for all units whenever this slide was created, which was either 2014 or 2015, was, six, you almost have to do it every month now to keep up. $1,600 was the average of rents. The new units coming online in the market were coming in almost $2,000. So this program is intended to help people who are suffering in that gap area. They, they just don't make enough to live here in Seattle. So the point of MA, the MHA program is to create 6,000 units so the people who make those salaries can stay here in Seattle. So that is why the mayor is doing this. Go ahead. So unfortunately, the map you really want to see is the one over there. Um, it may be in one of the handouts. There is an existing program the city already has that's voluntary that does this same thing. In return for some additional height or additional capacity, a developer can get some um, credits 